Is he coming forward? Is he coming? Yeah? I'm here. You're in a good position? We're all good, Antoine? Antoine? Good. Uh, Gele, yes. when you're ready. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. But I stopped Look keeping an apartment. I stay Look with friends. Intimacy to me is knowing the showers of friends. I look at the products that they have. I do this alone after they confide in me the secret rules of how to use their baths, showers, how to get good water pressure, how to get the right temperature, tabs and strings to push and pull to make the toilet flush well. There are no signs in their toilet, nothing to guide my actions like I might get in public. No humorous printouts to avoid the disposing of sanitary napkins into the bowl. I'm in their private spaces. I can be inside. I hold trust. You consider me trustworthy, right? I'm cleaning my legs with a rag, dirt or skin simply coming off. I always remember to collect all the hairs I lose from the plug hole. Still he calls me up, calls me up to the attic. I made these choices because I was tired of having my existence tethered to romantic decisions. Decisions I was making for the sake of whoever I was with. I came here because I wanted to make a choice for myself. I had to invest in myself, think about, think about my future. Ooh, this looks good. Bienvenue à Frac de Pays de la Loire. Merci de votre présence. J'espère que cela a du sens pour vous que j'ai passé le en anglais. I'm the director. Un grand merci. 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 Staring past a one-way mirror film black glass Imaginary space advance and retract until walls dissolve. Staring through faces vacant, creeping trance, and no resolve. Walls dissolve. Walls. D 
ich so. Okay, that's that section. And now it's the second intro, which happens on the table like this. I hope I don't fall. Um, okay. What's good, Nant? Bonsoir. I'm Ivan. Here in camera is Arvo. And behind the shelves is Gayle. We're here to perform Mood Apparent, a part of Standard Stare on Distance Desire Infrastructure, a project with songs by Marcus Well, Julia Reedy, Gaelic Retute, sometimes a sculpture by Mira Lee, and garments by Good and Bad, which is Marina M. Koloshova, Victor Stuhlmann, Ossi Lertunen. Tonight, we're restaging absolution toilet signs. We're in the same clothes, similar music, kind of different texts. Gayla plays the salad bar still, and I'm still a post-sugar baby. But so the service industry, which we're alluding to being in and out of, the service industry is where we're trying to keep things fresh, even the classics. I have to say, I believe in the worker, the union, the tips, wages, fees, the contractual position. But I want to speak about the strangeness of movement, of ascription, of creating value. In this universe, I play the sugar baby, so you just have to understand me as desirable to a certain type of person. I used to think, wait, sorry, my formulation is a bit all over the place. I'm not used to speaking like this with the urgency of authenticity. Like, I used to be charming and sweet and cute and kept, and they used to like when I put my foot in my mouth. My language was ornamental. I was called a sugar baby. Deleterious phrasing, powerful names. Private dependence. I'm present on my own merits. I didn't move into a space of not working, of feeling secure. I'm not dependent anymore. I dared to leave my baggage behind. I'm dependent. The job. Do you ever divide your time between work and leisure? Make clear division. What kind of time would you categorize this as now? Don't be jealous of the young woman, the children, who still operate in the old world where you think they are given advantages for their appearance. That threshold between young and old, that old world gave advantages to good appearance, Pardon? to the yummy looking. <laughs> yes, I'm this and that. Today I am carrion, decaying flesh of a dead animal, flayed out there, an air of avoidance. And thus I remain the same as the salad bar, the thing to avoid, the rule of exception. I represent the diet. I'm a passive salad bar, hulking, forceful on the promenade. I'm omnipresent like God. I'm the conscience that tells you not to be fat. I'm modernity and longevity, just like how the piano replaced the orchestra. I replace the machine. Right. You talk about regression and looking into the past. I remember the cruelest thing that I was ever told, that it looked like a pumpkin after it becomes a carriage. A pumpkin after it becomes a carriage, useless after midnight. That temporary usefulness to Cinderella, the future princess. Each week, there are five new episodes of MasterChef Australia, Sunday to Thursday, I love it. I tell my friends, you know, it structures my life. <laughs> my friends laugh at me. It's funny, right? One of the judges of MasterChef Australia died earlier this year, Jock. His first season, alongside Mel and Andy, was 
really one of my favorites. He passed just before the latest season was about to premiere, like the week of. So they delayed the premiere, and so, hungry for more, I watched the first season he was on again. Do you ever do that? Look at things you've seen before, again? Each episode begins with this Katy Perry song, Hot and Cold, you know, you're hot and you're cold, you're yes and you know, you're in then you're out, you're up then you're down, wrong when it's right, black when it's white, fight we break up, kiss we make up. And in that song context, there's this charming loose idea of we. It heralds that tension of fighting to be perceived as a great amateur cook, worthy of a media personality, as competition, as fight. And maybe the strength is in binaries, in the oscillation roller coaster of that, and the televised struggle to define who that person is and what that person's food tastes like, what their identity and background prescribes. My favorite still is Kishwar. Kishi? She should have won. There's something sacred in how she presents Bengal cuisine. You know, she studied art. I remember hating Sabina. Beans. Whoa. So many of them have simply receded into being nothing. They used to mean so much to me. But to be honest, I don't even cook. I don't really care about food. Maybe it's because I've always taken care of what I eat, watching myself, hating myself, willing to disappear into another story. I don't care about balanced flavor. I used to only eat microwave meals from Picard. You know, the brand, very chic. But that was also a shock tactic, since it was and still is a pleasure to take the stance that the body is trash. But look, fab, hot, cold, yes, no, in, out, up, down. She looks like a pumpkin after it becomes a carriage. She's older than I am. She was my patron. She says she's a fan of Francesca Woodman and offers me a punishing course through photo history, glorifying and edifying histories, her stories, where in her pied de terre, there's, it's not big, but I can imagine her nice objects becoming some endowment or collection eventually. She takes photos with her phone in a version of abandon, of carefree punkness, casuality that I'm into. She's amazing. She does it, always, her camera interrupting but remaining seamless. She obviously knows the power of slipshot imagery. We hosted a dinner for important guests, who I also admired, at the politicians, celebrities, and by the way, I don't know if you understood, but I grew up in the Commonwealth, so under the Queen, who's also now died, and I think that means that I have a particular relationship as a so-called colonial subject to a distant head. And so I invested all this importance on this event, and. You know, I was nervous, and I guess I am now too. And uh, I lost a bit of control of myself. I found myself toasting to the spirit of manners as I understood them. You know, pardon, cheers to pardoning, to the ability to let something move out of potential punishment. I was being an obsequious jester, provocative without purpose. Her servants did the serving. She took photos of the server's hands blurred in movement with hors d'oeuvres. And a few people at the table had also been watching that season of MasterChef, though for some reason they liked Pete the most. And I had tried to get in a conversation on the distortion of self-image or a willingness to let producers shape a narrative and rambled about the internet. Then some boomer was talking about how they now use TikTok. So, no, 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 no. I didn't get some caustic fractal of new thought on how older people are dealing with renegotiating their sense of public. She took her photos at the table, as natural as anything, and there I am in the images with candor. Among these important figures, my image beside theirs like a dynamic tableau at the wax museum, and my stratospheric taste of being a carriage pumpkin is there. You know, on MasterChef, they really toss around names like Ice Cream Queen, Pasta Princess, King of Cornell, Dumpling King, Pancake Prince. I remember being naive enough to feel furious, like, I thought, stupidly, like, this language serves imperialism. This is reinforcing everything about the casual monarchy, a hierarchical system. Then my mind flung to realize that the notion of mastery operates in the same sphere. Do you know to be a master chef? <laughs> but then I realized that master chef serves imperialism in that it augments and makes sinister food culture.
It goes affective, food as family, and memory driven to offer authentic new voices, a platform for the multicultural stew of untasted flavor, the foam of dilettantism as virtue. Butcher the carcasses, brown the bones, and prepare a stock. It's a slaughterhouse that constitutes the pantry. That's one way to look at it. But all this stuff, does it go away if you don't believe in it? Can you better resist reproductivity? Can Master Chef still do what it does to me without the competition and the single trophy and prize? Okay, pause. The scene isn't over, but now we're going to relocate to the back area. So if you're there, I mean, it's a bit too many people, but we're going to move towards the back. You'll still be able to hear everything. But yeah, like, let's move safely through the exhibition. Don't touch any of the artwork. Um, we're like, oh, I didn't say this is like, a, it's like 30 minutes or so, the whole show. So we're coming towards the end already. How sad. C'est tragique. But uh, yeah. Keep on moving through. Uh, this is enough. Maybe like leave this area free-ish. Yeah. Cool. And when you're ready. You are always leveraging your body as stock to be around people who were better than you that you thought were better than you, more powerful, more attractive, richer, more successful. Your participation was your value. My friends are not like this. They are all getting married. Do you know the movie 27 Dresses, where Katherine Heigl is always a bridesmaid? I love the journalist character in that and how Katherine Heigl betrays her sister with a slideshow of post images, which shatter who she pretends to be to seduce. As a salad bar, I know preservation. I'm emptied into containers for storage and containers for landfill. Garbage disposal is a gift. It's not a waste when the uneaten salad is thrown away. It's in as good a place as any. Thanks, Galen. Okay. Now, this next section, Arvo is going to stay up there for, and I square this off. And um, it's a call and response. So, what happens is I sing a line, then you sing a line. Um, and it's a song called You and the Color. When I radiate, when I radiate, it's a trick. It's a trick. Just to fill my void. Just to fill my void. Light from another place. Light from another place. Good. Sounds good. <laughs> when you turn. When you turn. It's like all the light that hits me. It's like all the light that hits me. Turns its photons on. Turns its photons on. Alien fingers, alien fingers, pull the words, pull the words, out my navel, out my navel, to your cornea, to your cornea. And when I speak, when I speak, it's like I'm the color, it's like I'm the color. And your space. And your space. And this is the refrain now. You and the, you and the color. You and the, you and the color. You and the, you and the color. Color. Blue is the, blue is the 
Hello. You and the you and the color. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> Great. Uh, you can give yourselves a round of applause. Bravo. You did it. That's good. Uh, but now Arvo, our brave cameraman, has agreed to speak this section, which is usually spoken by audience members. So. To the one that I thought I loved, I was once your angel. You made me the source and regulator of your well-being. And you say nothing lets you enter reverie. Reverie is heaven to you. I know your shortcomings, what you find repellent about your body, your habits, your obsef obsessive measurements of weight, mass, height, fat, temperature. And I know your type. With time, you'd eventually come to also do your sex, width, length, and dilation, and share this with me. Share with me the deepening of lines and wrinkles across your skin, every growing gap in your welding and joints. Measurement and increment have always been more appealing to you than algebra. You humiliated me by telling others about your infidelity. You betrayed me beyond the cheating. I look to you with scorn and fury. I hate remaining in relation to you. I'm filled with rage, and yet, you're so far, you barely feel it. Do you even sense me? The dice are rolling. There's an aleatoric teardown coming, and that means a teardown resulting from chance. It's inevitable. Residue remains like an earworm of groove armada. Salty air, sun shining, dibidin, mixed timing, deswing, harmonizing, synchronized things, maximizing. You're super styling. Thank you.
So, thank you so much.